Hello there, welcome to the uh, Canon Chancellor's Spare Bedroom for another time of Biblical Reflection and Prayer. And we're back today to the Gospel of St Luke, St Luke chapter 12 verses 41 to 48. I think it's quite a difficult little passage and because it speaks of uh, times gone by and institutions now lost. It's a passage that's going to take quite a bit of unpacking as we think of its relevance for us today. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for everyone? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and prudent manager whom his master will put in charge of his slaves to give them their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that slave says to himself, my master is delayed in coming, and if he begins to beat the other slaves, men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour that he does not know and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. That slave who knew what his master wanted but did not prepare himself or do what was wanted will receive a severe beating. But one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. From everyone to whom much has been given much will be required and from one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. I suppose the obvious thing to say is that we've uh, lived in a time in these last couple of weeks or so when uh, the business and institution of slavery has been very much in people's uh, world of thought again. Uh, placed back into people's minds and the question of whether uh, statues uh, to those who uh, benefited somehow from uh, the slave trade of the past should uh, remain as uh, symbols in our society in some way and as I speak to you now that debate to some degree rages on but if we go back to uh, New Testament times, uh, then we do go back to a time when the institution of slavery was, um, was part of uh, the daily character of life in so many ways. And it was often the case in that society that uh, some people, uh, the higher end of society, held uh, unreasonable powers over those at the lowest end to the point where they would enslave them and have complete dominance over their lives. It seems uh, strange for uh, Jesus therefore to use uh, some of this as illustration but in doing that he's being a human being of his time uh, living in the context of his day and uh, looking at the metaphors that might mean something to the audience that is hearing his words. That audience would have known all too well what slavery was about. They would have known all too well, sadly, the business of light and severe beatings being dealt to those who were at the lowest end of society. Uh, punishments uh, inflicted by those who held uh, positions of privilege. So uh, on one level the language to us is very strange if we were to describe the, the benefits of uh, following God today in terms of whether you were going to receive a light or a severe beating for doing so then uh, I suspect we would not have very many uh, people queuing at the doors 
wanting to hear more about this God that we often talk of as being loving. But in this reading, uh, Jesus is illustrating to some degree the whole business of the uh, urgency of his mission. And certainly in New Testament times and soon afterwards, there was a great sense that uh, Jesus not only would die and rise again, but would soon return and finally uh, make this world what it was always meant to be. And part of this reading is simply telling the people who are hearing it, be ready for that. Act as if Jesus is about to return. And if Jesus did return today, uh, what work of his kingdom might you be found doing? What might you be offering uh, to your community and your society somehow in his name? And I think that's going to be quite a big question for uh, the church in uh, coming days and weeks. Uh, we have, uh, at the time I record this, just opened our churches again for the business of private prayer. And uh, we will, no doubt, in coming weeks, get back to uh, worshipping together again and uh, caring for the faithful uh, in a more real and physical sense. But at the same time, we have a, a great responsibility to the society and community that we live in. And there will be many uh, long-standing hurts in that community and society as a result of uh, all that we've been through in the face of COVID-19. There will be those who are bereaved and those who are dreadfully anxious. There will be those who have been economically impoverished. And for a while we are going to see uh, more people, I suspect, uh, struggling with aspects of day-to-day -day life. So if we are uh, the faithful community, what this reading is also saying to us quite clearly is that much will be demanded of us. We cannot in that, I think, uh, simply uh, hide ourselves behind the doors of our churches and uh, minister to the faithful and speak of uh, heavenly salvation without going through those doors into our community and doing all we can to help in uh, the material salvation also of the many who will face hardships in coming days and weeks. That feels like an awesome responsibility. The hard message, I think, of this New Testament reading is that Jesus simply tells the people of his day that if you are a follower of mine then uh, many blessings may come in your life but with those blessings comes a great responsibility a responsibility to be real and active in uh, the physical as well as the virtual world and to be the hands and voices of God in that world seeking to uh, do his work inspired uh, by his spirit offered through his grace and love an awesome responsibility and one that uh, I will certainly be uh, praying about in coming days and weeks hoping that we might be uh, granted the direction and uh, the inspiration to respond well uh, to that challenge. We think about uh, the recent divisions in our society. For those who remember back to uh, the dreadful days of slavery, when uh, one group of people in society held 
unreasonable levels of power over others. We pray for an end to those divisions. O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our only Saviour, the Prince of Peace, give us grace seriously to lay to heart the great dangers we are in by our unhappy divisions. Take away all hatred and prejudice and whatever else may hinder us from godly union and concord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray the prayer we pray many times, which looks to uh, those who are hurt and hindered by the crisis we've faced and hands them into God's mercy. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.